Well, good morning. I am prepping a rose workshop. I'm very excited uh, because <laughs> I'm sad, I know. It's a niche business being me. Um, but it gives me an opportunity to go round my roses and have a real kind of play housey housey with them. Uh, we are the beginning of July, so um, I think we're the 6th of July. And so the roses have had their first kind of woof flush and they're just settling into their nice repetitive keeping going and they'll keep going till about the end of July then they'll have a rest they always have a little rest in August and then they'll come back and have a rave up in September and October possibly less floriferously uh, but still just as gorgeous I love my roses anyway um, I thought I'd tell you a bit about uh, how we prep our online workshops having done a uh how we prep our physical workshops here you know if you're thinking of holding workshops it's a great way to add income whatever your artisan business so um i am suffering a tiny little bit of uh covid post covid brain fog so i'm making very super lists because i don't want to get it anything wrong because i hold my online workshops are live because and I have small groups so there are about 15 people so that there's plenty of opportunity for people to chat and ask questions um, although sometimes because we have students from all around the world not everybody turns up because we always send the recording afterwards with some notes and um, so people can watch it at their own convenience later so last night for example I did a social media for small business workshop and we had 10 people booked on and only four people turned up. But actually it was fantastic because it meant we had a really kind of intense uh, session and we could look in quite detail, a little bit of detail at all the different people's approaches and what they were trying to achieve, which in some ways I think for the wider audience who will be looking at the recording later will be really useful because they'll see how you can take an idea and apply it to a particular situation, how you can extrapolate what I'm talking about into something useful for each individual business. Anyway, back to the roses. I love talking about business. I love talking about small businesses, making businesses work for one. <laughs> and I also love talking about roses. So come on, let's go and have a look at the ones I'm cutting for today's workshop. By the way, it's always great if you subscribe to the channel. Please uh, press the bell icon and we'll tell you when we've got more clips coming out. And if any of the tips and tricks I give you as we go along are useful, then please do buy me a coffee. The link is in all the blurbs to all the different clips. Um, thanks very much. Here are two of our... Uh, we've got roses in quite a lot of different areas. Um, because then if one area is having a bad day, the others can have a nice time. So this is two of my main rose beds up here. Um, somebody has left hose pipe all over the lawn. I'll have to get rid of that. You can see they've really had a major deadhead, which is always a good idea uh, to keep them flowering, and they'll flush back afterwards. Oh, this Vanessa Bell, she's a real scrumptious lemon yellow and she fades to white as she comes out um, to my astonishment I discover that we have 23 different varieties of roses that we cut here <laughs> I've never actually made a full list before um, and this is Desdemona isn't she beautiful uh, so I'm I'm excited to discover we have so many uh, it's obviously I am a bit of a butterfly, so I like to have variety in life. Here's old Boscobel. She's got a great scent. So I'm cutting one of each of the varieties and I'm going to take them in so that I can talk through the, all of them at the workshop. And not all of my roses are brilliant for cutting. If I have a glut, there are some that I find I leave behind. Um, and some of them are useful for different things, not necessarily for cutting, but possibly um, using as potpourri or in, you know, for their scent or for food. Cakes. 
And while I'm walking around looking at the roses, having a think, I'm also quietly, mentally counting up stems for cutting for this weekend because uh, there are weddings. There's quite a lot of cutting to be done tomorrow. Today is, is Wednesday. So I'll be doing this workshop. I'm planning the workshop today. I'm holding the workshop on two days in a row, but I've got to get it all planned and sorted today because tomorrow I have to spend all day cutting uh, for this weekend's weddings and events. So counting in my head. And when I cut for this workshop, I'm cutting quite blown examples so that I can really show my students what the flowers look like. But also I want to keep the perfect sized ones. For example, look at this beautiful Boscobella. Uh, I need those for the weekend. So um, I'm sort of, you know, as always, I'm multitasking. This Tuscany Superb has been superb this season. She's really, she only flowers once in the season, but my goodness, when she flowers, she flowers. This little row of roses is in its second year and you can see they really aren't as big as the others. Um, they just haven't settled in so much. They've done nicely, they're fine. The reason I keep them in this cutting patch is it's much closer to the studio. And so if I need to do a quick demo or an emergency bunch of flowers for anybody, I can pop out and I've got all the equipment here. I don't have to go all the way up to the top field where the big rose collection is um, to cut from there. Uh, this, is, this is Darcy Bustle, isn't she gorgeous? So I've just been, I'm really playing housey house here. This is going to be really fun. So um, I've got out some of my vintage jam jars and I've flung them through the dishwasher to get give them a little, a little gleam. And here are one each of all our roses, except, except for the staggering, gorgeous, lush beauty of this extraordinary, stunning, monstrous rose, rambling rector which isn't really grown for cutting. And my goodness, we have to hack it back or it'll kill my beloved Blenheim orange apple tree through which it grows with such voracious appetite. It's fun deciding how I'm going to display my roses for my workshop. I'm really, I'm sort of having a, I feel as though I'm having an afternoon off. That's been sort of unexpectedly stressful over the last few days, which is why I've been completely silent on here. But uh, spending some time with the roses is not only um, fun because I've got a workshop, but I think it's probably very good for my mental health and calming. Anyway, um, it's quite fun. I, th I would look through the way other people display their roses and maybe think about it. For me today, because I need to have them to hand so I can talk about individual varieties, I'm putting them in. Each one is having a vase. This is a Shropshire lad. Oh, I know. Um, uh, so each of them are gonna have their own vase so that I can kind of grab them and bring them forward for the, for the chat. Um, oh, hello. There's a little shield bug in there. Um, so, but afterwards I might put them on my shelf and make a lovely shelfie. <laughs> Do you look at Florette? Do you know Florette? Um, She's a very clever girl in the Pacific Northwest who's made a very good business, top marks, out of her flower growing. And she has a kind of a theatre. So she puts individual varieties of flowers in a sort of theatre on a shelf. And it looks, and it's very beautifully lit from one side. And it works really, really nicely. So once I've done my workshop, maybe I'll do that. Um, it's so good to be inspired by other people, don't you think? I, I I don't, <laughs> I'm always telling my students, I did a social media workshop last night and it was really fun. And I just, I think it's really, really worth looking at what your colleagues in your industry do to, for inspiration. You're not copying them, you're being inspired. Anyway, today I'm being, I'm channeling my inner florette uh, for my 
rose shelfie I'm going to do later. I'll show you when I've done it. Oh, now that's that's lovely. I think I don't need to do. I need. To, I could take my inspiration from other people, admire it, like it, but then stick to what happens naturally in my own studio. Oh, look at this. I'm going to make a list of these now for my students. Um, I think this is going to be a very popular workshop. So the recording, I think we'll make the recording available for people to order as a download on the website. Um, and that'll be there on Friday. So, I mean, there's so much to say about roses that I think, <laughs> if you want to know what I think about roses, then uh, <laughs> order the workshop. It'll be two hours of chat and fun all about these gorgeous people. Aren't they fab? I better write all their names down in order to make sure I can, <laughs> I can remember which is which. I think I know them. I think. Yes, and this is what the studio actually looks like as I clean, <laughs> as I film. I need to get some serious tidying up done before this workshop at five o'clock tonight. Ha <laughs> ha! Quite exciting though. I'm quite. Um, 24 varieties, that's what we grow. I don't massively cut all of them. Uh, the Rambling Rector, for example, sheds immediately you cut it. But it has a very pretty hip and you don't only grow things for commercial value. Oh, I don't know about you. I don't only grow things for commercial value. I grow them because I love them. Wait a minute. Who is this interloper hanging on at the end? No. <laughs> it's one of my lovely peach pom-pom dahlias. One of the first to flower. I will tell you, the dahlias get their own workshop. So you stand aside, Peach Pom Pom. We'll look at you another time. Oh, just glorious, lush. Right, so there are the 24 different varieties of roses that we grow uh, as flower farmers and florists and for our secret pleasure. Uh, there will be a great deal more information about how we grow them, what we do with them, how we plant them, how we feed them, and all of that malarkey on this workshop, which I'm holding tonight, and which I think I will keep available on the website for people to order as a download afterwards for a month or six weeks. <laughs> so if you're interested in more, then you can always download it. But if you've enjoyed this session, in spite of the interloping dahlia, and you've just enjoyed an opportunity to step away from the world, which, let's face it, is thrilling, isn't it? Um, too exciting for my taste, what's going on. Anyway, uh, if it's nice, just been nice to step away from the world, then please subscribe to the channel. Please uh, press the bell icon and we'll tell you when we've got more clips coming up. And if any of the tips and tricks you have enjoyed in this clip, or even if you just like to support the channel, you can always buy me a coffee. The link is in the blurb to all my clips. The coffees sort of inspire me to carry on making the clips. So thanks very much. Uh, plenty of you do it, so that's very nice. Anyway, enough of this burbling. I better get ready for this workshop. <sighs> if you, if only we had smell a vision. <laughs> that's that's the best thing about this room. I really, I have to say, it's it's been a quite a fraught few days. So if you're having a fraught few days, feel free to find a rose, stick your nose in it. It's very, very calming. Have a look at my friend Saskia Essences. Uh, she lives in the village and she takes our blown roses and makes essences from them. And um, she knows all about how calming the scent of the rose, the, the essence of the rose is when things get fraught. It's all about personal space. <laughs> oh. Anyway, onwards and upwards. I'll see you later. Bye. Enjoy. So one of the um, interesting things I have found about putting this, all the roses together like this, is that I have found that, for example, there is old Jude the Obscure, who I always considered to be more apricot in colour but actually has ended up in the pinky white end of the spectrum. And then scooting along here, 
we will find somebody I would have thought would have fitted into the pinky white end. And actually, here's Willerton Old Hall coming up really apricotty yellow. Who knew?